Hey guys, I was going through my library the other day when I came across this book and decided to flip through it and realised it had a great little tutorial on Max Script. In fact, the entire book is parametric architecture using Max Script and in all of my years I have not come across a single person that uses Max Script. I'm definitely sure they're out there, but whatever. I thought, what a great little tutorial, I'm going to steal it and do it for Python and Grasshopper. What we're going to be setting out is a lovely little Grasshopper script with some Python and what it's going to do is run through all the options that we prescribe to give us an array of options. So I hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, to get started I've got a brand new Grasshopper document as well as a fresh Rhino drawing document. And the first thing we're going to want to do is create our origin point, generate the cube, set up all our inputs so that we can use Python to automate them. This step is pretty straightforward, so if you guys are pretty confident, feel free to skip to part two of this tutorial where we'll be focusing on the Python side of things. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to grab our vector and under our point, we're going to use our construct point component. We want three number sliders, say zero, uh, less than 500 to create a number slider zero to 500. Put that in X. Click and drag, and if you hold down Alt, we'll create a copy of that. Release, and we'll use that for Y. And finally, another copy for Z. Tidy them up. There we've got our origin point that we're going to generate everything off of. As we saw in the book of the Max script version of this, it was a simple cube. So we're going to generate a cube using curve under primitive. We're going to grab our rectangle, use the point we've just created as our origin plane for X and Y. We want it to be a square. So we're going to go 0 to 10. Change that up to 10. And use that as X and Y. So that gives us our square curve. We want to move that up in the Z direction to turn it into a cube. We go vector. Going to go under the vector tab and grab our unit Z. And we're going to move, transform, Euclidean, move. We'll grab our rectangle geometry for our geometry and transform vector, translation vector, sorry is Z and we'll just use our width and length as our height to make sure it's a cube and to create our solid we're going to go under surface freeform use our loft component if we grab our rectangle put that into our curve input grab our moved square hold down shift after we've generated our input and add that in and that creates our loft. We haven't capped the end, so if we go back into surface, utility, cap holes, and we'll use our loft to cap the holes, which will create a solid. Perfect, now we can hide them. We don't need to see them. So now we've got our base shape, we want to set up our input variables so that we can um, automate the changes with Python. First one we'll do is we want to scale down the top so that we get a tapered effect. We're going to use uh, transform, fine scale. We're going to use our top curve of our square shape and we can see that it is going back to zero zero the um, center point defaults to zero 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 
what we want to do to make sure it's always the center of that curve. Going to go back to surface analysis. Going to grab our area component. Use that geometry to generate our centroid. Use that as the uh, center of our scale. Can right click and hide that one. So now that we've got that, we need to do our factor input. Going to create a new number slider, one to ten. We'll call that. If you right click on it, you can rename it to taper, so it makes sense if someone else opens up our document later. So one obviously is a scale factor of one, which is the original size. If we change this to the, uh, the integers positively, we can see that it's increasing. So that's four times the size of the original square. So we want that to be a fraction of one. So we're going to simply right click on the factor input. Under the expression, we're going to go x divided by 10. And then that turns, what have we got, 4 down to 0.4. So if we change that to 5, that would be half the size, up to full size, down to 1. So you can see we're only shrinking down the uh, curve. We're not getting the effect on our solid shape yet, so it's easy to fix. We just move that over. We're going to grab our scale down curve. And we're going to grab our original base curve, click and drag, hold down Alt, and there's our new shape. Our next step is we want to add in the twist of the top curve. So we're going to go Transform, Euclidean, and we want to get this rotation an object in a plane. We use our scale down geometry curve, our plane, we're going to reuse our centroid and the angle we're going to use the radions under trigonometry under our math so math trigonometry that's where you'll find radians put that into our angle input that takes a degree as we'll we'll recycle our taper but we'll highlight control C control V to top copy Actually, no, we won't. We don't want it to start at 1. Double click our canvas, say 0 to 10. Oh. 0 to 10. Remember the hit enter. We'll right click that and call that twist. And use that for our degree input on our radians component. And we should see the curve twist slightly very very slightly so what we're going to do is we're going to right click our degrees we're going to x times 10 in the expression editor so now see we get a bit more of a an aggressive twist the reason we're doing that is because we want our uh, number slider to have a smaller integer for the Python that you'll see later. So we scale it up here with the expression. We could have that going up in larger numbers, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just doing it this way. You can feel free to do it any way you like. We're going to update our closed box. We'll hide that. Don't need to see that curve. And there is our final object. These are our inputs. We could take any input we want to automate, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to start off pretty simple. Um, so come back for the next part, which is where we'll jump into the Python editor and we'll automate uh, generating a few options. If you like, and use my tutorials please like and subscribe and leave a comment